The long wait is over, and your patience is finally rewarded. It's not payday. Better. It's another episode of The Ingle Angle with Fort Worth Star-Telegram award-winning columnist, Mac Ingle. I know that because I am Mac Ingle. Accept no substitutes. Uh, I am so glad that you carved out your time to join me again for another episode. And before we get to my guest, I do want to address a full-blown crisis in the male community. It's something so bad that even the most toxically masculine male refuses to discuss. But I'm going to. I'm talking, of course, about full frontal male nudity in the men's locker room. Fellas, cover it up. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see mine, and I sure as hell don't want to see yours. There is nothing more potentially irreparably harmful to the young, forming male brain than that of his first visit to the men's locker room. The smell of that blue Windex junk where those straight combs sit, all the sounds of the coughing and the clearing of the throats and the constant groaning and moaning among those middle-aged men senior citizens who do anything in their attempt not to go back to the house. And when you're young, those sights and sounds are nothing compared to the sheer terror of seeing the naked male scrotum as it sags pathetically in a losing fight against time and its effort to continually to defy gravity the way it did many years ago. Now I'm 47 and I am rapidly approaching my 40... No, that's a lie. God, I'm that old. I don't even know how old I am anymore. I had this whole joke written out. It's the same tired one I you say all the time. I look 47, but I'm ratchet, rapidly approaching my 49th birthday. And I will never forget those Saturdays when my dad took me to his athletic club when I was like seven or eight. And you'd see all of that old, sagging, naked flesh around the men's locker room. Totally indifferent as to who the audience might be. I didn't like it then, and even though now I am approaching that stage in my life where I don't care about any of this stuff anymore, I still know better than to sit there and flash anybody. Because not that long ago, I encountered a situation so frightful, so terrifying, and so unforgettable, I decided to take my global platform to lobby to stop all of this. This happened a couple months ago. I was in a men's locker room, and as I walked by the three stalls of toilets, I could see a pair of feet. And then the odor hit me. It's the type of sensation when you're driving down the highway and you pass a cow pasture or a landfill, maybe a giant pile of burning diapers. So I picked up my pace, and I can hear the familiar sounds of that power flush. <laughs> And then the door to that stall behind me opens, and I can hear, Hey, Mac! Now I can look in the mirror, and over my shoulder, I can see the person who has walked out of that stall, whose actions likely dented that porcelain toilet. And that person is totally naked. We're not talking about people's, you know, People Magazine's sexiest man alive here either. And this older gentleman, in his naked state, he wants to have a conversation with me. He wants to chat about sports, college football, Dallas Cowboys. 999 times out of 1,000, I am more than happy to chat with someone for a minute or two about sports or whatever else. But I got to tell you, this is where I draw the line. And like so many lines in my life, I erased it just to accommodate the situation. And this older man is standing there, A, totally naked, eight feet from me. B, he's standing two feet from the toilet that he has ruined with odors so bad he nearly set off the fire alarm. Now, I'm trying not to be rude, and it takes every fiber of my being not to sprint out of the men's room screaming, Police! Help! I stand there, and I casually backtrack, and I'm trying not to look at him. I'm trying to look any place but at that being. He starts walking towards me. He takes his right hand to scratch his ass. Totally, completely toned after what's going on. I'm like, oh my God, just go anywhere but here. And what felt like no less than three hours and 14 minutes and 
three hours and 14 minutes, I say, hey, man, I got to run, which is exactly what I did. So I'm here today to plead with men of all ages that when you get into the locker room, you should have the freedom to change without fear of judgment. You should have the space to take off your shorts and boxers and put on a towel. You should. But cover it up immediately. We don't want to see it because when we do, we never forget it. And on that note, the normal transition, let's talk about women in wrestling. My guest today comes from the insane world of big-time professional wrestling. You don't have to be a wrestling fan or know who this person is to appreciate this interview. I, I try to create this interview so for a broad audience. She's a native of Tennessee, and now she's one of the most successful female performers for the absolute giant monolith that is WWE. Uh, I do want to tell you, before you listen to this interview, that it was recorded a few days before WrestleMania came to Arlington, Texas, the first week of April. And it was recorded a few days after the Academy Awards, where Will Smith smacked the hell out of Chris Rock. You might have seen that. The reason I'm telling you that is because right out of the gate, there's a bit of an awkward moment. So just roll through it. With that, please welcome Bianca Belair. Hello. Bianca? Hi. Bianca, this is Mac Engel from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Are you in uh, the greater Dallas-Fort Worth area getting ready for WrestleMania? I am. I got here yesterday afternoon, so I'm already uh, running around Dallas getting ready for WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania week. All right. Uh, so I've got a handful of questions to ask you. These are kind of fun. Some of them are going to be a little bit different. This will be a little bit different, okay. but these are they're benign questions, so don't worry about anything. You're going to be saying anything terrible. But, um, you know, as a performer, I did want to ask you and get your opinion on something. What did you think of the famous slap punch between Will Smith and Chris Rock? Um, hold on just a second. Hey, Mac, this is Joel. Yeah. Can we do the next question? <laughs> We're just going to move away from that, if that's okay. Okay, just tell me, is that you guys have to avoid that? It's just, yeah, it's just not, it's not super relevant to Bianca or to WrestleMania. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Bianca. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Hi. Okay. Okay, Bianca, you're not that old. Uh, and women in WWE as headliners are not that old. So when you were coming up, who was your female WWE role model? Um, for me, well, my journey into WWE is just a little unique because I didn't really watch WWE a whole lot growing up. My brother watched it a lot, um, and he's the one who kind of got me into it more so than anything. But growing up, um, I really remember always watching China just because she was just naturally strong and she embraced her strength and um, she she was just that, that powerhouse. And But for me, um, I think what's amazing about WWE is our fan base is just so wide. It's not just kids, but it's people of all ages. So the person that really stuck to me the most was when I first got to WWE was Beth Phoenix. Um, she was the first one that I could really relate to. Uh, she, I saw her putting, picking up two girls at one time, a military person girl. So she's the woman that's inspired me the most out of, out of all of them. Uh, so your athletic career way before you got into WWE is pretty distinguished from what I've read. Is it yeah. true? Is it true that you attended three different SEC <laughs> schools as a track and field student athlete? Is that right? That's true. I uh, started off my freshman year at the University of South Carolina. My sophomore year, I went to Texas A&M. And then my third year was University of Tennessee. And I eventually graduated from the University of Tennessee. Uh, okay, so the nerd in me is going to ask this. So when you're <laughs> transferring from one school to the next, and I've wondered about this as student athletes now, you know, transfer now is as easy as getting up in the morning. Do all those credit hours actually transfer or do you lose hours going from one school to the next? No, I definitely lost hours, um, um, especially being in, I, I majored in uh, business and all business schools are different. So a lot of my credits from Texas A&M did not transfer to the University of Tennessee, almost end up being ineligible because I didn't have enough credits over uh, for the following year. I still know it set, it set me back a lot, not just um, 
you know, not just athletically, but academically. And it took me almost a little bit over five years to graduate, but I eventually got, I eventually got, eventually got it done. So if you went to South Carolina, A&M and Tennessee, I am assuming because you graduated from Tennessee that you consider yourself a volunteer, correct? I definitely consider myself a lady vol for life. Oh, but there's a piece of me at each university. Um, you know, being a Gamecock diva, I really hold that close to my heart as well. Um, this is my first time being out of the house at 18 years old. I create a lot of memories. And Texas A&M, uh, when I was there, had some of the, the best coaches in the world while I was there. But I'm definitely a lady vol for life, and, and I really see myself as a lady vol. Can you sing Rocky Top? I can. I, I, I can't promise you that it's going to sound good, but I can definitely <laughs> sing it for you. <laughs> so when I'm reading your bio, it says that you got your first, I don't know, look or tryout, however you want to define it, in WWE through, uh, I think, a pretty famous guy, Mark Henry. Is that accurate? Is that Was he your introduction into WWE, or is that just a myth? No, that, that's so true. Um, after running track at University of Tennessee, I really miss that competitive atmosphere because I've been an athlete my whole life. So I started doing CrossFit and I made all my outfits and I wore like these big old bows and tutus and sequins and I was grabbing the microphone and talking to the audience and uh, just using Instagram to build my brand and Mark Henry saw a video of me competing and he contacted me on Instagram. He's like, hey, you're you're basically wearing wrestling gear and cutting promos and you don't even realize it. Have you ever thought of being a WWE superstar? And he told me that he can get me a tryout. Um, he said, you have to do the rest. And it took me two tryouts, and I finally started in WWE in 2016. So Mark Henry was the first person that saw me and believed that I would be the perfect fit uh, for WWE. So when you have this career ambition, you go to college, you get your degree, you're going to do something. You're obviously a terrific athlete. I know you were doing CrossFit competitions. But at some point, you've got to tell your family, hey, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. <laughs> what was that conversation like and how did what was their reaction to it? Um, I remember when I first put my mom, um, you know, ironically I was trying to find my way after college and you know, being an athlete and what what's my next move and I told my mom, um, I was thinking about trying to try out for WWE, so I went online and looked at how to enter in my information but I didn't follow through with it and <laughs> Then a couple of months later, Mark Henry contacted me, and I'm like, wow, this is just either too good to be true or, or a perfect fit. But my mom, uh, my mama, she was very hesitant at first. She's like, you sure you want to do this? And, and you know, I don't know. And but my, my daddy, he was all for it. He was like, yeah, I know you can do it. You've been tough your whole life. You've been strong your whole life. So, But my mama, um, she got on board, and now they're my, they're my biggest fans. They haven't missed any of my big moments that Right. They were at WrestleMania last year. They're going to be at WrestleMania this year, this Saturday, when I'm facing Becky Lynch. And now they're my number one fans, and I, all, all the WWE universe knows who my parents are every time they, they walk into the arena or a stadium. If wrestling hadn't worked out, like clearly it's worked out, you're a star, you're in WrestleMania, you're, you're established, an, an established name. If that hadn't worked out, what, was, what do you think your career path was going to be? Ooh. Oh, I'm a person that's like all over the place. I like doing everything. I I don't know. I feel like I I could be um, a surgeon because uh, I like piecing things back together and fixing things and helping people. But I think I would also still be a seamstress on the side and, and write a book here and there. And um, I think I would, would do a whole lot of different things. I think I would basically be doing what I'm doing now, being the EST of everything and trying to fit that into my life somehow still. Uh, when you did your first performance, your first competition, do you remember the size of the check that you got? Because I hear horror stories about, like, I got paid $10. I, I didn't get any money. The, the guy, did, Do you remember how little or how much you were paid that first shot out? Uh, well, I didn't really come from um, the wrestling background, so I didn't really experience being on the Indies that much. I mean, at all, actually. Uh, so I never really experienced that that, that side of everything. Um the only thing I can really relate that to is it, CrossFit. Is me winning a CrossFit competition, and I think I won a, a hundred dollar gift card to Lululemon. That's the only thing I can really compare it to. <laughs> you won a hundred dollar gift card at a CrossFit competition, and that was your big moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it true your first stage name was actually Binky Blair? Um, 
No. Um, All right, that was on Wikipedia. Blame that was on Wikipedia. Yeah, no, it's always been uh, Bianca Belair. That's the first name that I got once I got into WWE. So that's what it's always been, and it stuck. Uh, true or false? My nickname growing up was Binky. Your nickname was growing up was Binky. Okay, I was like, I wonder where that came from. Uh, True or false? You are married to fellow WWE star Montez Ford. That is true. That is true. Do you ever practice moves together? Yes, we do. Do you really? We actually, we do, we do. Um, We bounce ideas off of each other all the time, and we do practice moves together. We we recently were just... uh, Went down to the performance center this past week um, so that I can try a few things out before WrestleMania. But we we train together all the time. Um, we hang together all the time. We travel together all the time. And we work together all the time. Uh, relationships that start, you know, obviously in the workplace, which obviously that's your workplace. WWE is your workplace. Th- that's really common. But I've always wondered, like, and you do see relationships that start in WWE. How do the like Bianca? How does that start? That that seems like such an odd thing. I mean, are you practicing and he throws a guy out of a ring and then he looks at you and says, "Hey, let's go out to dinner." Like, how how does like what's the origin of that kind of relationship? I think everybody has their own different story, um, you know, of of how their their fairy tale started. Uh, but for me specifically, I met my husband when, when I got into WWE. Um, we really more so met outside of the ring. Um, I saw him uh, when I first came and I had a huge crush on him. And then I didn't see him again for a couple months. And then I actually saw him on an outing when um, a couple of the WWE superstars all met up to go out to dinner. And that's really when things kind of kicked off. So we kind of like kicked off out, outside of the ring. <laughs> Do you think people fully grasp how hard it is to make it to where you are? to where any of these big time headliners are as WWE pros, like are the odds just as challenging as it would be say for a guy playing football who wants to make it to the NFL or guys playing basketball and they want to make it to the NBA. Is it similar to that? I would say it's definitely similar, similar to that, but I will say I I do believe that WWE superstars, we don't always necessarily get the credit that we deserve because what we do is is strenuous. It's hard. It's demanding. Um, and even to get to WrestleMania, I mean, that that's the dream. And there's some people who never even make it to the stage of WrestleMania, let alone main event WrestleMania, like I had the opportunity to do last year. Um, but there's, we're, 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 we're all around just superstars, you know, not just athleticism, but from our creativity to the demand of traveling to doing the media, you know, we can get up and, and do interviews. And it's just we have to be an all-around superstar to do what we do. And it's, it's, we're really just amazing at what we do, and we're amazing talent that should get way more credit than what we get. All right, true or false, you won an SB in 2021 yeah. for the best WWE moment because <laughs> you and Sasha Banks were the first black women to main event WrestleMania. True? That is true. That is 100% true. What did you do with your award, and where is it in your house? My award, um, I, it is up in uh, um, my room with all of my different accolades. It's hanging up right next to my SmackDown Women's title that I won from that match for many winning WrestleMania with Sasha Banks. Uh, that was just that was just an honor to just be recognized in the world of sports. I mean, the SC is one of the biggest awards that you can get in the world of sports, and uh, to be to be acknowledged uh, for that moment just shows how big that moment is and how it's going to continue to inspire people not just now, but for generations to come. All right, Bianca, now we're going to move on to the fun part. These are the questions that I think you'll like. These, these are questions that I stole <laughs> from the Book of Questions and the Proust Questionnaire. These are, these are kind of fun, deep-thinking questions. It's not Ooh. WD, but you'll like them. You'll like them, I promise. So if you could gain, if you could gain any one ability or quality that you admire in somebody else, what would you choose? Ooh, um, I would gain the quality of... Um, like comedy. comedy i think it's just amazing to be able to get up get up and just make people laugh with the words that come out of your mouth i think that's that's amazing or singing i wish you could sing really good that is probably the important thing everybody everybody <laughs> like but do you think if you do you think you could develop that ability to sing or qual like just by working at it or are you so bad you're like nope i could spend ten thousand hours and i'd still be terrible mm-hmm. at it I think I might be able to carry it soon, but I just don't think it's it's in it's in the books for me. It's just <laughs> not a quality that I was given. My dad can sing, 
he's an amazing singer in my whole life. Even as a kid, I used to try to, I made him buy me a karaoke machine because I wanted to sing like him, and it just never happened. <laughs> my dreams should never come true. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know if you can say this, but I'm going to ask you anyways. What's the most outrageous thing you've ever done, and do you look back on it more with regret or pleasure? Oh, the most outrageous thing I've ever done. Um, I would say at the time, um, joining WWE, I took a leap of faith. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, I did not come from a wrestling background. I didn't know if it was going to work out. I uprooted my whole entire life to go for an opportunity. And it is something that I 100% do not regret. I chose to go and live and try to be happy and be successful at something. You have kids, right? Yeah, I have stepkids. You have stepkids. Okay, that's right. So I've had, I don't know if you've had this problem when you've talked about it, because I, I have a daughter, and if you've had this challenge, Bianca, when you guys do birthday parties, and you do all this elaborate <laughs> stuff, and then the kids don't ever remember any of it. Like, don't you remember that birthday? <laughs> no, I don't have any idea. Well, it's great. I spent $500. So I'm curious, do you have a favorite birthday memory? Like something that your, your parents did it upright, and you actually still actually remember any of it? Oh, man. So growing up, I always had the, the best birthdays ever. Um, <laughs> I think I have the GOAT parents. I'm so blessed. Uh, my parents used to throw me um, indoor birthday, in, indoor uh, swimming pool birthday parties. So in, in right in the beginning of spring, when it was still cold outside, they always always threw me these luau uh, and they were indoor swimming pool parties and they were the best parties ever um they threw you a luau I, they threw me they threw me luau wow. an indoor swimming swimming uh, pool luau my daddy had his uh lifeguard certification so he was a lifeguard and i was like the coolest kid who got to have an indoor swimming pool party <laughs> that sounds like a good party it, it was it was an amazing amazing parties they did almost every year uh, all right, let's move on to a couple more. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? I would say I would change um, maybe I'm, – I'm very indecisive. I'm very indecisive, so I wish I could be less indecisive. <laughs> uh, what's your greatest regret? My greatest regret, I don't have any regrets. Oh, come on. Um, Nobody means that. I, no. If, if if there's, I think about the things in my life that, um, they're like my, my down times and bad times. But honestly, if I would have changed one thing, one thing, I would, I would not be here. My whole path led me to where I am now. Every single thing that's happened in my life led me here. In the moment, it doesn't feel like it. But. No, I, I honestly don't have any regrets. Right, I give you credit. I always, I always envy those people. I regret getting up in the morning. Okay, what's your greatest extravagance? Like, what's the one thing, Bianca, that you really splurge on yourself for? Um, my house. My husband and I just recently bought a house about a year ago, and I love chandeliers. Wow. And I bought, I, I bought a chandelier for almost every room, so I, I, I'm not. I don't really splurge on like labels or clothes and, and so much because I make everything myself. All my money goes into my house. When I'm home, I want to feel like I'm at home living in a palace with my husband. Like I love being home. I splurge on my house. <laughs> Do you have a chandelier in the bathroom? No, okay. but I did ask my it. husband, would it be too much to have a chandelier in the bathroom? <laughs> and he told me yes. <laughs> Uh, but actually, I take that back. I actually do have one over like the tub. So it was the laundry room I asked about. He said I couldn't do the laundry room. <laughs> uh, all right. What do you consider a most overrated virtue? Like something that somebody, hey, I'm always on time. Who cares? Like what? what's one of those things that you think is really overrated that that's people sell as a virtue? Mm, um, I think being on time is, is very important. Okay. Um, overrated is this is a hard question um overrated virtue can I get a multiple choice <laughs> sure yeah go ahead it's your, it's your canvas uh, uh so I'm asking can you give me a multiple choice oh can okay you, like can, can you give me uh, multiple choice so let's see punctuality is one that I think you're right punctuality is important you want to honor somebody else's yeah. time 
Uh, cleanliness, hygiene. No, those are kind of important too. I don't know. No, well, I mean, that, that, that's super important. Good grades. Um, is that a virtue? That's important. No, that's it important. is. Yeah, that shows hard work and commitment. And, um, well, I, this is a hard question. I know. It's I, I, some of these you really put them on the spot, and sometimes people nail it, and other times people are like, "Man, I don't I, know." There's like 50 of them, and I can't think of any of them. I'm not. I'm not hitting this one. All Sorry. right. All right. Got two more. I got two more. <laughs> On what occasions do you lie? Oh, what occasions do I lie? Yeah. Um, probably I would say, I think anytime you don't tell the full truth is a lie. So maybe for like Christmas, <laughs> I will never tell someone what I got them or I'll tell them that I didn't get them anything when I really did get them something because Christmas is huge and it's all about the surprises and you can't ruin the surprise. I did lie to my husband one time. I threw him a surprise birthday party, and I will never do it again because he made it so difficult for me to surprise him. <laughs> <laughs> I had to lie to him for almost a whole month, and it was awful. Okay, well, speaking of lies, I just lied. My producer here just showed me. He wants to know, like, when it comes to your extravagance and chandeliers, Bianca, what kind of prices are we talking about? Like $500, $1,000? Like, how much are these chandeliers? Oh, I'm not doing anything like too extravagant. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a big Wayfair person. Like all my chandeliers are coming from Wayfair. Oh, okay. I even bought a chandelier off of Amazon. So it's <laughs> not always about the price; it's about the aesthetic of it. <laughs> all right, look, Bianca Belair. Last question. And I'm sure you get this one a lot, and I hesitated to ask you, but I was like, no, I, I can slide this one in. She's cool. I can ask this question. You have the most amazing hair I've ever seen, ever. <laughs> Is it real? Thank you. Of course. Uh, Bianca Miller, the EST of WWE is out in the ring. That braid is real. What do you <laughs> mean? Growing from the scalp since 1989. Wow. <laughs> That's outstanding. Uh, Bianca Belair, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. I really do appreciate it. I wish you the very best of luck and continued good health, both in WrestleMania and moving forward. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Take care. Okay, as I close out this latest award-winning episode of The Angle Angle, I do want to drop some advice for all of you who compile bucket lists, you know, of places to go and things to do. And I say this in complete sincerity, add WrestleMania to your list. Now, I know, I know, for those of you who don't love this wrestling stuff, I'll be honest, I don't really get it either. I went to my first wrestling event at WrestleMania 32 in Arlington, Uh, Texas back in 2016, and I didn't really know what I was watching. I can appreciate, however, the athleticism and just the showmanship of the entire Bananas event. It included one of the most athletic feats I've ever seen. Charlotte Flair did a backflip off the top rope down on two of opponents who were standing on the ground. Never seen anything like it. Totally badass. Anyways, add WrestleMania to your sports bucket list next to the Super Bowl, World Series, Stanley Cup Finals, NBA Finals, NCAA Basketball Final Four. I've been to them all. And WrestleMania, yes, it deserves a spot in that conversation. Not for necessarily the event, but for the people who attend the event. People watching at WrestleMania is unlike anything I have ever seen, and it tops every other event combined. These people are insane, and they are constant entertainment. Now, should you go, should you go to WrestleMania, just be sure to follow what should be the same etiquette in a men's locker room. Keep your clothes on.